I wasn't. Uh, I don't want to say I was against it because that would be incorrect. But I wasn't as like hip or, or like completely in on the idea of what would be deemed as a parallel economy. And I'm going to explain what that means in, in my terms and how I view that. But a parallel economy is more so looking at some of the things that we like and love and need, want and need, and looking at it from the aspect of, okay, maybe what happens or what exists now is controlled. Like, for example, I talk about it in the entertainment space a lot. It's full-blown leftist authoritarianism social justice, the usual buzz terms, and that's what they hyperemphasize. If the focus shifts from trying to change them and more about building a a parallel economy, what would exist would be an alternative to whatever that is. And it's not just in the entertainment sector. Think about this for every single industry. That would exist maybe alongside it that does the same thing or tries to fill the same role, Um, the same demand. Like I said, I wasn't that all in and bought in on it, but certainly as more time has progresses, but progress, that's going to be a necessary thing. I guess my previous view wasn't that I was anti parallel economy. It was more of not looking at it like, because I think these guys are going to be out of there uh, soon enough. Um, or be forced to pivot. So I was looking at it like more of them scaling back versus these alternatives growing. But you think about it in the context of a parallel economy, it makes a lot of sense. And that is that that focus gets rerouted to something that's in within the same industry and those start to grow and start to manifest as those people start to uh, invest in those, use those products that are alternative and to the contrary maybe of uh, what, it is that is deemed as more acceptable in mainstream. Now, the hard thing about that and pulling that off is that it requires the customers to be a lot more mindful. And this was the thing where Liberty kind of, uh, and our focus on Liberty, I'm not going to say it got us in trouble. Liberty is on, on top of the list of the important things, private property rights, of course. But in doing so, you had a lot of people under the impression or rather neglecting culture, and they neglecting the importance of it because they're looking like that's stuff that they don't generally care about. So the person that just doesn't care and just, okay, I don't give a fuck what your politics are and all of this. That doesn't matter in a perfect world. Uh, and not even in a perfect world, a better world. That would be the case. 1990s, early two thousands. That was the case where people just got into whatever they wanted to get into. And nobody was talking about racial bullshit or political stuff. Wasn't like dominating uh, the conversation. That wasn't really what it is that we were dealing with when it came to realizing where your dollar went. Unfortunately, whatever happened after that, we went back with, and now it's all people focus on. So you're thinking about it from a parallel economy standpoint, maybe that's where when I talk about the 51, 49 percent rule and that's 51 percent of your money, your your efforts, your 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 investments, time going into products or creators of said products that are that don't hate you. <laughs> right. Because what we have now is these guys are comfortable. They're cocky. But what I think people don't realize and maybe they don't even realize how much they depend on on the um, money of people that they don't like, right? So even though the creators of maybe a Marvel movie, so the directors or whatever may hate Trump supporters or people that may, you know, like Trump or even be fond of him, well, that doesn't change the fact that there's been a hell of a lot of Trump supporters that have watched their movies, that have paid admission for tickets, to see it at in, in the theater. That's an important thing to make note of. Now, again, that has happened because unlike with the other side, like let's say the more leftists, they pay attention to all that shit, right? That's why they, they're hitting the whole cancel culture thing. That's why some of that kind of arises. So I'm thinking less about canceling because they're not creative. They hijack, right? I'm thinking more creation, and customers being mindful of where their money goes so that these alternatives start to rise 
and become just as prominent as what is deemed more mainstream. Now, that's not going to come without a fight. These guys are going to do everything in their power to keep that. They love, they like that. You know what I mean? They may act like they hate money and all that. That's all bullshit. They're going to do everything they can to try to delegitimize that. You see what happens with like social media, but that doesn't mean they can stop you. They make it difficult for you, but they can't stop you because once the people within the marketplace decide that's something that they want, well, that's what happens. So maybe the parallel economy is the approach to maybe even force the hand of the people that maybe have things that are in control. It doesn't matter. It may be something as simple as the, the water that you're, you're, you're drinking, the company that owns that, um, or the, the entertainment that you watch, you read, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it, what it is. Being more mindful of who that money, who that dollar is going to fund, right? Like it should freak you out that Warner Bros., and, and Disney, for example, are funding Newsom's uh, recall or lack thereof. Like they they're funding him so that they're recalled. Like that's a fucking bizarre thing. Right. Um, and obviously he's a piece of crap. So if we have a parallel economy, maybe it forces their hand to either adjust or maybe they just get ran into the ground. Either way, you need to understand. And this is my message, I guess, that I'm trying to make long winded way of saying this, that all of you guys have a lot more power than what you give yourselves credit for. Customers have way more power than they give themselves credit for. And I think these people, uh, they try to demoralize you and they play these fake outs, right? Fake trending topics on Twitter, making things seem way more popular than what it is they are. Hell, even with the Shang-Chi shit, uh, as an example, uh, has the third fucking worst box office performance of an MCU movie and they somehow spin that shit to make it seem like they doing a moral victory lap. It's all about trickery, bro. It's all about gaslighting. It's trickery. It's, it, it's speaking shit to, into existence for people to get the, to take that bait. And then they feel like demoralized. No, no, no. If the customers say, well, we want something else. Go to that. Uh, uh, and provide something if you're a creator for them. The customers just need to be more mindful. You can't afford it anymore, right? You tried it. Has left took advantage of you not paying attention or not giving a fuck where your dollar went because you were more like, which again, in a perfect world, that's how it would be. You're more like, I just want the product. I just want to be entertained or whatever. You can't really afford that. If we can get a parallel economy, though, we can get, I don't know. Maybe that parallel economy becomes the the dominant one, right? It becomes the do- these these alternatives of, of different things. Doesn't matter if I'm talking about everything. Thinking, you know, even in like the crypto space, talking banking, we're talking everything, top to bottom. Looking at those alternatives, shifting your focus over there and turning them into fucking uh, really dominant products. That way, your money, so much of your money, time, and effort isn't going into People that fucking hate you is more so the what we're trying to accomplish here. And I think the parallel economy could accomplish that. Maybe it forces their hand and maybe you see later on that those economies start to merge again when people start giving a shit about trivial stuff like politics and all that other other stuff. Maybe maybe we get to a point to where they merge again or maybe the 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 alternative the parallel economy that was created out of this becomes a dominant economy. Or maybe they're just parallel for, for, for you know, forever. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, the customers just need to understand that you have a lot more power than what you give yourselves credit for. And you can change a lot. But there are a lot of it, what it does. It requires an attitude adjustment. You, you got to really be more mindful of that and understand that there are alternatives. There are musicians that don't suck that don't hate you, right? There are people in every basically space that you could possibly think of that don't hate you that are making good products. And this is why I continue to say that the creatives have to understand that you got to be very, very good at what it is that you do and can constantly beat on your craft and produce something that the customers want and can value. Don't think that your old support just because you're creating an alternative or you take create a shit alternative and you think that, uh, you're warranted some sort of money just because you're no, no, no. That's not how this works. You need to be good at what it is you're doing. But the parallel economy approach may actually get us out of this situation. Um, but it requires the customers this is where it all starts to be more, more mindful of their spending. You just watched a clip from my podcast for Ken and sake. 
Catch us live at 12 p.m. throughout the week over at youtube.com slash youngripper59 and follow us over at odyssey.com slash at youngripper59. If you want to watch the entire video cast after the show is over, just be sure to become a member on the YouTube channel. Of course, the full audio portion of the podcast is available for free on all major digital platforms or just visit forcanonsake.com. 